Hello everyone, 大家好, 안녕하세요, 大家好. Today's video marks the start of the Korean Government Scholarship Program KGSB series. Woo! I'm first going to be going through with you the documents you will need, and in the following videos, I'll be sharing with you tips for the interview and how to write your personal statement and statement of purpose as well. I know the undergraduate application is starting soon, and even for those who are applying for the graduate program in the future, this is going to come in handy. For those of you who are new, I'm Jo and I'm from Singapore. I've been studying my master's degree in Seoul National University since the start of September of 2019. Out of 40 to 50 applicants that year, I was chosen as one of the three Singaporean candidates for the scholarship. When I was preparing for this scholarship, I couldn't find much detailed information online, which is why I decided that it would be useful for me to share the tips and lessons that I've learned along the way. I guided my friend for her KGSB scholarship application this year and she was selected for the scholarship as well. Disclaimer, these are just tips and lessons that I've learned along the way as I prepared for my application, so I just hope that you will find them useful. Let's go! First, let's take a look at the documents you would need. I highly recommend you to start preparing your documents at least 3 months in advance because there is actually quite a lot to do. There might also be issues with your documents that need to be reissued and that is going to take up time as well. I will explain further later on but the earlier you start, the better it will be for you. This is the first page of the application form. It is basically a checklist for you to make sure that you have all of these documents before submitting to the embassy. It is very useful and important so let's go accordingly. Number 1. Your application form. This is just for you to fill out your personal particulars, your education history, grades and awards that you have achieved and employment history. Personally, I actually wrote about 17 awards in my application. I included my academic achievements like my dean's list and my non-academic achievements as well. For example, leadership awards, character awards, dance awards, my swimming achievements like lifeguard certification and my electron organ grades as well. I personally think that it is good for you to show that you are an all-rounder and not just someone who only knows how to study. The scholarship panel will also be able to get to know you better as a person through your achievements and awards. However, I think something that really helped me was me winning the third place in the Korean speech contest that was organised by the Korean Embassy in Singapore. I'm sure other countries have this as well. This allowed me to get to know the Korean Embassy staff better and I wasn't that nervous when I went for my interview. In summary, there is no harm in you putting more awards in your application. Next, for your employment history, write down every single job that you have done before, be it a part-time job, a full-time job or even an internship. Describe what you had to do for the job, for instance, retail assistant. You can say that you assisted your colleagues, you can say that you addressed customer requests, you can say that you handled cashiering or even tracked the inventory, or basically that was just what I wrote for myself. Next, I'm going to skip the sections on personal statement and statement of purpose because I'll be doing a more detailed video on how to write them impactfully. So, please remember to subscribe. The next part is research proposal. This does not apply to undergraduates or graduates. This is only for the research program. So we are going to move on to number 5 which is letters of recommendation. You will need two letters. For me, as I was applying for my master's program, I had two of my university professors write for me. One was my thesis mentor and one was my Korean teacher in university. If you have learned Korean, be it whether you are good at it or not, it will be good to have your Korean teacher write your recommendation letter because they are the most aware of your Korean abilities. For the second letter, it would be beneficial for you if you have a professor or a teacher who personally knows you or have worked with you long enough for projects to be able to give you a fair assessment. In universities, professors are usually giving lectures and even in tutorials, they usually don't remember who you are because it is over such a short period of time, which is like one semester. For me, I figured that my thesis mentor who worked with me over the course of a year would be the best person to write my recommendation letter. Since the documents need to be sealed when you submit to the embassy, you cannot photocopy them. So please, please remember to ask your professor or your teacher to give you four independent copies or whatever the amount that the embassy requires. Number seven and number eight are just your applicant agreement and your personal medical agreement. They are just for you to go through and sign, nothing much, so moving on. Number nine your certificate of bachelor's degree or diploma or whatever your highest education attainment might be. For me, it was my bachelor's degree. I know some of you might not have officially graduated when you're applying for the scholarship, so you might not have received your certificate. This applied to me as well, so I just submitted a document that justified my expected date of graduation. Your school portal should have them, or you can call your school administration to request for these documents. 
If all else fails, email or call the Korean Embassy and they will give you instructions otherwise. Here comes the problematic part which I struggled to the very last day of application. For your degree certificate and transcript, they have to be original. They have to be. You cannot just photocopy them and have your school official stamp on it. That is not going to work. You have to request and pay for four original transcripts and certificate from your school. Just remember that original is the best. They don't really like photocopies and it will be better for you to just go with the original rather than to suffer like me on the very last day of application. For number 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15, which are about master's and doctoral degree, they might not be applicable for you so just tick no. Next, number 16 and 17, your parents and your citizenship documents. For me, I submitted my birth certificate but to be sure, I decided to submit our passport copies as well. Number 18, 19 and 20 are not relevant so just tick no. Number 21, for topic, you will need to submit your topic certification. For me, my results were not out yet when I applied for the scholarship, so I just take no. I submitted my grade after they confirmed me as one of the successful candidates. 22 is the English proficiency test which was not relevant to me because English is my first language and Singapore's education system is in English. But as I know, the most common ones are TOEFL and TOEIC. If you are unsure, you can always call and check with the embassy. For 23, you can submit research papers or published thesis that you have done previously. It would help you with your statement of purpose or the area of study that you are applying for. Finally, awards. You can photocopy your certificates and submit them at the end with your documents. All in all, you will need four sets of documents. So get four folders and sort them out properly before you submit to the embassy. Important documents like your graduation certificates and transcripts need to be original. That's all for today. Feel free to leave me comments down below and I will do my very best in replying to you. I would actually love to do a live Q&A session with you guys but I will need to have a thousand subscribers and 40,000 watch hours or something like that. So yeah, please subscribe. I'll be uploading more videos on how to write your personal statement, statement of purpose and interview process as well so remember to subscribe to this channel. If you found this video useful, please remember to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in my next video. 